So one of the building blocks that we've talked about is the comparator. We started talking about offset cancellation and different aspects on the upfront amplifier. But in a comparator, one of the things that's needed is eventually to convert this analog signal to a digital signal. And often this is done with, a, with the aid of a latch. So we'll do a very basic analysis of latches. And then we'll see how it's applied in an exemplary um, comparator to, to see how it behaves. So now, what is a latch? Latch, the simple, a simple implementation of a latch, so let's say we're talking about a latch, um, is a pair of amplifiers. Now, you can implement it with resistive load or you can have transistors up there too. So let's make it simple one with, with the resistive load where you have a pair of cross-coupled transistors like that and then you have two resist load resistors, let's say R. Um, R1. And then you have two transistors, like, well, in general, it would be M1 and M2. You have some VCC. Now, if you look at this circuit, what kind of feedback do we have? Well, we can identify that by assuming that, for example, this node move up, moves up a little bit. Okay, this is an almost invisible marker. Um, so let's say this moves, node moves up um, a little bit. What gonna ha what's going to happen from this amplifier's perspective? This is the input of the amplifier. This goes up. This is an inverting amplifier. This goes down. Now the input of this other inverting amplifier is going down, which basically means that this is going back up. So you have positive feedback in this system, right? So if there's a small deviation, that deviation in the inputs would be between the two nodes, would, you would expect it to get amplified more and more. And eventually to go in one direction. So one of them, for example, this will go to VDD and this will go close to ground. So that's basically qualitatively what happens. Now, quantitatively, we can actually think about this many different ways. We can write time constants, et cetera, et cetera. But let's write differential equations for this, just quickly to see what, what happens. So let's call this voltage V1 and V2. And if you look at these as V1 and V2, then you can draw the small signal model for this. So what, on the left-hand side, we'll use the pi model so on both sides. So you have a GM V2. If this is V1, right? You have R1. Well, you have the RO of the transistor. Let's call it RO. And then you have R1. And then you have some capacitance, let's say, CL. And on the right-hand side, you have a similar circuit. So this is GMV1. This voltage is V2. This is RO. This is R1. And then there's a capacitance CF. OK? So these are the two sides of the circuit. So, so we can write differential equations for it, for example. We can write this for the two voltages. Now, we can actually write a KCL at this node, right? If you write KCL at this node, at node 1, what do you have? You have the current through this thing, which is given by C, let's call it just C, um, to make things simpler, C D V1 over DT, so that's the current through the capacitor, right? Plus the current through the two resistors, let's combine them, let's call this GO, or RO, capital GO. So the parallel combination of those, the conductance associated with that. So it would be GOV1, right? Plus the current to the current source, uh, uh, the dependent current source, which is GMV2 equals zero. Now we are assuming that GM1 and GM2 are the same here. And similarly, for this, for this node, you can write a similar differential equation. This would be DV2 dt, that's the current through the capacitor, plus the current through the resistors, plus the current source itself. So you have a pair of coupled differential equations, right? Which is not that surprising. Okay, so what do we do? Now if I defined, if we defined a voltage V diff is V1 minus V2, right? If we define the difference voltage as a voltage, then we can see that you can actually subtract a first, second equation from the first equation and what will end up is that it, it, a single equation that's in terms of the differential voltage, right? By subtracting the first equation from the second equation, the uh, second equation from the first equation, you will get what? You get C D V diff 
over dt plus, then you have these terms. So I write it this way. I write it as gm minus go over c. I'll divide both sides by c, the capacitor, v diff equals zero. So this is a differential equation, the, the first order differential equation governing the, di uh, the differential voltage, the difference of the V1 and V2, right? So what you have here is that, you, and we can call this, this has units of 1 over time, let's call it 1 over tau. So you can write even a more simplified form of this thing, or more compact perhaps, 1 over tau V diff. So let's say that the circuit is implemented this way. Let's say you have a switch, so I'm going to add something here. And then there's some sort of a voltage here. Let's call it V initial. Some initial voltage implemented here. Now this is to represent the voltage that's coming out of the first amplification stage that's induced on this latch. This is related to the comparison voltage, right? So this is the voltage that comes out of that amplifier up front of a comparator, for example, that is the initial condition on this. It could be also all sorts of used in other cases. But this can be potentially a small voltage. And the point is to, to see what this does to a small deviation, a small fluctuation here. So this differential equation can be solved easily. I mean, like you, you can easily, it's almost trivial. So you can see that the V differential is going to be V initial. Basically, if you let this capacitor, so, so you basically have this, this switch is closed. So this voltage is established. And then you let go of the switch. So you let the two nodes operate independently. So you, that becomes the initial condition. That becomes the initial differential voltage. Well, if I want to keep it that way, I have to really have this polarity, but it can be negative. Then what happens is that then it becomes e to the power of t over tau. So you can see that if you start off with some initial voltage, the differential voltage grows exponentially with time. Which means that if you actually look at the individual two voltages, V1 and V2, you already had established some sort of a difference, which was, so this difference is V initial, means that this is going that way and this is going that way. And eventually, of course, one goes to a volt, low voltage and one goes to a high voltage. Saturates to VDD and ground. So, but it's an exponential growth, right? And a with a given with a, and controlled with a time constant tau, which is given by C over gm minus go. Now, obviously, for this to work, this gm minus go has to, gm has to be greater than go, right? Otherwise, that coefficient becomes positive, so the exponential it would be the exponential decay. It would not operate as a latch. The transconductance has to be stronger than the resistances, the positive resistance. So neg you're basically inducing a negative resistance. You've seen this before in problem sets. Um, OK, so basically what you have is that you have something that grows like this, and then you, you grow. So the cool question is, so for example, in terms of design guidance, one of the questions is, how do you choose? How do you design this thing? Because there are two things you can control. You can try to put a larger initial voltage on this, okay? or you could try to make the time constant small. Let's, let's see. What you're really caring about is a time it takes to reach to a minimum level. So, so this is a, let's call this V min. This is the minimum voltage you need. You say, I need at least one volt to be able to resolve one from zero unambiguously. I mean, you can pick any value, right? So that's called that V min. So if for a V min, for a differential to be a V min, then you can solve for that. And then you will arrive at the following conclusion that the T min, minimum time to get to that level, is tau natural log of V min over V initial. So now, this equation tells you something interesting. It tells you, so we can control the tau or we can control the initial voltage. What you notice is that if you try to establish a larger initial voltage on the latch to get to a resolution, to a decision sooner, you only, if you try to increase it, you will only take it, gain by, in a logarithmic fashion, right? Increasing the V initial only improves the time 
but in a logarithmic fashion. It's in a denominator, so it would improve it. Make you, you make the initial voltage larger. You start from a larger initial voltage. Of course, you will go like this. Right? Let's pick a different color. Um, so if you have a larger initial voltage, you would go there. But that would improve your t min, whatever, whatever the t min is, um, logarithmically. Right? But tau, the time constant itself, is helping linearly. Right? So it's advantageous to try to kind of like make this, if you have a design choice, it's better to actually make it so that you have a smaller time constant than a, initial, uh, a larger initial voltage. Now, keep, that, keep in mind that in the initial voltage uh, has to be larger than minimum level of voltages that you can have in this thing. They're offset. There's like variations in the devices, right? So you can't make it arbitrarily small. So once you get to that level, that's, you can reliably resolve something without an error due to offsets and things of that sort. Beyond that, you really want to make the sizing of the devices and control that in a way that would help you avoid this problem by making tau smaller. Now, practically, we, don't ra we rarely actually implement it this way, right? We actually put another pair of transistors, maybe a PFET, pair of PFET transistors off the top. So the way it would actually look like often is something like this. So you have a pair of NFETs and a pair of PFETs. And you can have something like this with a switch. Now, how do you implement the switch? The switch is, can be implemented as a transistor itself, right? So let's say we implement it as a PFET. OK? And then this is basically where we clock the system. Now, often, you may even want to actually clock this part of it, too. So for example, you may end up clocking the t current source that biases this thing to make sure that you turn it on when you need it. The timing of these two need to be controlled relatively. Sometimes you just need to maintain something uh, a little bit before or after. But overall, this is the way you clock the latch. Right? So these are NFET. If you want to draw them as analog devices, then you will do arrows and arrows here. If you want to think of them more as a digital devices, you can use the bubble or no bubble. They're the same thing. Um, but so, so this is the latch. So what's, what happens here is that you basically have, by having a PFET and NFET, you get the negative resistance of both the PFET and NFET. You get the compounded GM of the two. And of course, you get the compounded capacitance of the two. So that's one thing. But then you say, OK, well, how does the full comparator look like? I mean, it can be sim something even as simple as something like this. So you can actually have a differential pair here that takes the two inputs, so let's say V in plus V in minus of the comparator, and then there's a current source that can also be clocked, or not clocked, doesn't matter. I'm just like, let's be ref. And what you do is that one of the inputs is going there, one of the outputs, one of the current outputs, and the other current output is attached here. So this is what basically establishes. This can be as simple as this, or it can be a chain of amplifiers the way we described before, right, with offset cancellation and things of that source ahead to amplify the signal to sufficient levels to bring it here and then let that latch trigger. So what happens here is that you need something like this. One of the things you need to do is that if this is your comparator by itself, you usually want to steer away when you, so it has two phases, right? It's the phase where you actually uh, are amplifying so your signal is coming in, you're amplifying, you're establishing a voltage. That's when these two are on, the current's flowing, this switch is on, right? So you don't let the latch go crazy. You have a total positive resistance here. So it doesn't blow up, it doesn't go kind of exponentially grow. And then in the second phase, when you basically turn the switch off, you already have established the voltage, you turn the switch off, you turn this one on, and then you let the system kind of essentially pick up that uh, thing. And when that happens, one of the things that would be preferable, for example, is to take all of this current away. You can do it by either turning this tail transistor off by clocking it in the opposite phase. So for example, you could do this, 
Because you want it to, when the clock goes up, that's when the latching phase starts, right? You want this thing to turn off. So for example, this could be established through some sort of a, an inverter of this clock. And you need to size this properly so it doesn't do crazy stuff. Uh, you may need to break it down. Or even better than that is to have something that you have a fixed current source anyway, like the device I drew, let's just keep it, with a reference voltage, which we know how to generate from before. And then what you do, you want to basically just steal this current away. So what you would do, you would put a, another transistor here, for example, connected to VDD. It's driven by this. Now let's see what happens. If that voltage of the, the gate of that third MOSFET goes, to, goes very high, what would it do? It would just take all of this current, it would absorb all of this current of this branch, and nothing is left for these two. The advantage of this thing is that you don't need to turn this tail current source on and off, which would take some time to establish. So you can do things of that sort. So this can be, for example, a simple latched comparator. Now you can have more stages up front. You can have offset cancellation. You can actually make it pretty complex and sophisticated based on that. But that's the basic principle behind it. Any questions?